Hi there, this is the Queen Bee coming at you. And today my tools are flush cutters, uh, flat nylon jaw pliers, and my chain nose pliers. Uh, and I'm using a mandrel for making jump rings, but I love it for other things too. You've seen me use this before. All right, so I'm gonna be using some like extra copper that I've got. I bought it at Michael's a long time ago. This is 20 gauge. The stuff you get at Michael's, see the bead landing logo there? It's coated with an anti-tarnish. And oh, this is the 26 gauge weaving wire that I will use. That's bare copper, so it's much softer. Um, and that's what I wanted to say about the um, stuff from Michaels. It's The coating makes it harder. My cab for today is a piece of crazy lace agate that's also a druzy. It's really, really cool. I love that diagonal slash there. I've had this piece for a while, I've just never really known how to uh, tackle it. It measures 44 by 47 by 8 millimeters. So it's a good size. And I'm going to speed myself up here so you don't have to watch me uncoil everything and cut it and whatever. I'm going to be cutting uh, two lengths of wire off of this spool and that basically uses the whole spool and each length is about a foot and a half. I wanted a nice long length so I you know, wouldn't have to fuss with adding lengths of wire and all that. I wanted this to be as simple as possible. So there goes the spool. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm just working it with my hands a bit, seeing the difference in feeling. It really is different than the other stuff. So I'm just noodling around, seeing kind of what catches my eye as far as how to capture the stone. I knew I'd have to go across the front. So I thought I'd follow the lines of the stone. So I'm going to do my preferred weave. You can use any weave that you want, but I really like the um, three by three, as I like to call it, where you do three wraps on one wire and then three wraps on both. This weave works well on three wires as well. If you've got three base wires, it looks great. If you do three wraps on the two bottom ones and then three wraps on the two top ones, it looks really nice that way too. But of course, it's completely up to you what kind of weave you want. I wanted something kind of a like a tighter weave because... Um, I just wanted to keep the wires together, kind of like a ribbon. I, I had in my imagination, I thought of a kind of like a ribbon on a present, like a gift wrapping thing. So I realized in the end it doesn't really look like a gift, but but that's, that's part of the process. <laughs> it's not really knowing how it's going to go. So at first starting the weave is tricky because you've got this long, these long wires and they kind of flop around all over the place on you. But once you get a little bit of length on, it's a lot easier to maneuver kind of between the wires with your weave. Yeah, so I'm just kind of fussing around with it, making, trying to tighten the weave as I go, even though that's really hard in the beginning. <laughs> I find it challenging. 
That's mainly what I use the nylon jaw pliers for, is just pushing the weave together. But you can't really use them until you get far enough along, otherwise you're just pushing your weave. You're not pushing it to compressing the coils. You know what I mean. You guys are smart. And I'm gonna be coming up here pretty soon on uh, me sped up a little bit so that you don't have to watch it in real time. It'll be me kind of taking the length of weave that I'm that I made here, but about an inch and a half of it, which we will see. <gasps> Now, <laughs> there it is. So I'm sped up so you don't have to watch me do this in real time. So I'm just seeing how much length I um, have in relation to where I wanted to sit on the stone because I don't want to weave all the extra and put all that extra work into the back because you're not going to see it. So it doesn't matter. Kind of like in um, other videos when you've seen me do these kinds of weaves, I don't typically weave along where the back is going to be. It's just not that critical. So I'm taking the long uh, kind of working ends of the wire here and I'm following that kind of diagonal slash just because it's so cool and it's dynamic and energetic. Those energy lines are so great. If anybody out there has studied art or art history, uh, you'll know about sort of uh, the energy that line can, lines can have. That's why, um, you know, broken lines or diagonal lines or whatever are so prevalent in the arts. Um, well, modern art especially, uh, because um, there's just lots more visual impact with them. So I thought, why not? Let's just go for it. So I'm going to do the same weave the whole time, so you don't have to. So you don't have to see me do it over and over. So that's the part that's going behind the stone, and I've just very loosely coiled the weaving wire around it so I didn't have to start and stop it. Now I'm going to start the weave again because I'm coming up around the to the front of what will be the front of the stone. And I should take this uh, moment to say thank you very much for subscribing and liking and sharing my videos. It's been really cool. I've had a little sort of surge in subscribership lately, so I'm very, very grateful for all of you. And uh, it's greatly inspiring. Um, I never ever want to miss the opportunity to make videos for you because. So many of you are just so kind and lovely, so thank you once again. And of course, if you like this video, go ahead and do the same th thing. Like and subscribe and share it online and, you know, all of that. So, alright, I'm going to follow that diagonal line with the weave. There it is. I've sped myself up again, it looks like, so that you don't have to watch how I sort of deal with this. Now, I will tell you that doing this weave with um, this coated anti-tarnish copper is harder. I found it much trickier because it's springier. It's kind of like when you're dealing with um, like half hard silver or something and you want it to take the shape. If, for example, you want to make a ring, a wire ring, 
and you wrap it around your mandrel to the size you want it and it goes bunk and it just like springs out ever so so you have to wrap it smaller than what you need it because it that's just the the way it works I, I, I can't explain the metallurgy but that's the deal with it is it just it just springs back and that it's the same same deal with this is only I can't really wrap it smaller than I need because I it's not like I have a jig to wrap this around it's a unique stone so and so there's the next uh, portion looks like a letter A right now and I'm gonna weave that part if my sister was here she'd be like that's so cool because her name is Allison so she'd be like yeah letter A <laughs> uh, it's really tricky to to do this wrap as well in the beginning when you've got like the two lengths like this because um, it, it's not enough to support the stone yet and it's already taxing enough on your hands to be doing this weave because it is a dense one. So you have to keep putting the stone in and taking it out and sometimes you will find, there we are, you'll, you'll find you'll put the stone in the wrong way or <laughs> something like that. That happened to me a few times off camera. I was like, how come this doesn't fit anymore? Oh, that's why. And so, I'm just seeing, because I need more support on the front there. There's just not enough for that one side, that lighter pink side. Um, that'll just, it'll just fall out. So, I'm going to do that. Cross over again, make kind of an asterisk uh, wrap. That's sort of how I think of it. Sort of. There we go. And I'm going to start working on the bale now, it seems to me. Don't worry, you'll see it in a second. There we go. I've got my lengths here. And I'm going to pass them underneath the initial starting point here. So I'm going to use four base wires to make my bale with. So you'll see I'm kind of wrestling around here with getting this wire underneath that first bit. It takes a bit of um, maneuvering and manipulating to get that to cooperate, but it, it does. You just have to give it some patience. And I will cut uh, my weaving wire at this point with a long, long tail. And then I'll just weave the bail with that. Because we're essentially in the home stretch, really. There we go. So I've cut the weaving wire so I can pass it under like this. I suppose I didn't have to pass it underneath like that, but it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Okay, so I've got my four base wires and my tail. I'm just seeing how everything's fitting. And I'm going to wrap eventually here. I'm going to wrap my um, weaving wire around the base at the, you know, at the base of the bale just to stabilize it so I can start weaving. Don't worry, by the end this is completely solid and it won't move. Even though at this point it's already pretty stable. Um, I just want to make sure that things are okay. 
Here's one extra thing I do to stabilize the, uh, um, the side there that you'll see after I'm done with this bale. Oh yeah, and while I'm able to um, let you know, um, do um, subscribe. When you subscribe, click the bell icon next to uh, my name so that you get an email um, whenever I upload so that you can you know, know right away when I've uploaded and you don't have to keep checking. Not that you, you know, check like all the time or anything, but you know, you know. <laughs> that way you'll know <laughs> that there's something there from me and you can watch you can come right on over and watch okay so I've got my bale wires here that are obscenely long don't worry they get cut but I do like to weave a nice health healthy sized bale I don't know why. I've just I'm just partial to that. Of course, that's completely up to you. You can uh, you can weave whatever kind of bale you want. You can just make loops if you want. It's that's the fun of all of this is that you can make it your own in so many ways. I've been looking on Pinterest at all the different. Um, ways that people are wire wrapping um, especially square shapes like this because I have lots of square cabochons squares rectangles uh, just all kinds and I I mean I've, I've worked with them before I'm not completely foreign to it but I don't um, I don't always have the greatest ideas for how to deal with it so uh, this is a very variation on how I saw one of the, one person wrapped their stone. This is a pretty big variation, actually. It's not really at all like theirs, but started with their an image of theirs. Okay, so I'm wrapping around two of the base wires on one side of the bale, and then I'm wrapping across. To the other two. So I'm treating two as though they are one. So I'm wrapping around three times, then passing across to the other pair, and then wrapping around them three times, and back. And it's just back and forth, back and forth. This is my preferred method for doing a bale. Again, completely your choice. There you go. See, that's how I get that zigzaggy kind of pattern with my bale. Alright, so here I am in fast motion because you don't need to see, you know, what's going on really in real time. I've got lots of length here, so I'm just using my flush cutters to get rid of that because I don't need that. But I am leaving some length so that I've got wire to work with to turn under on the back. But first, we must turn and make the bale. I'm just using the biggest portion of my mandrel there. Because the stone is a somewhat large, you know, it's on the larger side. So I thought I'd make a larger bale. And I'm literally just turning the wires from that under the existing stuff that's back there. That's part of the reason I went across the back the way I did, so that I would have place, a place to hide my bale wires. There we go. Turning, turning, turning. There we go, there we go. And I'm just kind of twisting my 
pliers with the wire just to kind of move the tail and tighten it around. Okay, so I'm going to do it in real time now, in case, just in case you need to see it for real. So I'm just pushing the wire under like that and twisting it like so. I'm pretty sure you all understand this, but just in case you've not worked with wire or you're not super confident, this is what you would do. No need to use your fancy round pliers or anything like that, there's no real point. At least, I don't find there to be any real point, because this is the back. These are not decorative loops, they are utilitarian. And there we go, so you bend your tail underneath. There we go. And then you, once it's underneath far enough, you can grab it like that. And then you twist it around. Okay, so these two wires on the side there are just annoying the heck out of me because they need to be sturdy. If not, things will be wiggly and I don't want any of that. So I'm using a piece of short, a short piece of copper that I cut off earlier. Just some old, just some extra 20 gauge that's not really useful for anything. But it is useful for being a baling wire, so I'm going to essentially do that. I'm twisting it around these two wires that I want to touch and make like a triangle shape. I'm going to wrap it around them so that everything stays taut. And I'm going to do the exact same thing you just saw me do with the bale. Wrap, wrap, wrap. And uh, you won't see this um, connection. It'll be at the back of the piece, so you won't, you, you won't, it won't interrupt the kind of visual flow of the wire weaving. But it will provide that necessary support that I want. So we just cut off the excess, like so, get rid of it. And then I'm just going to twist the little short ends around the wires that are back there. and make sure they're not sharp. In order to do that, I like to turn the wires so that the edges of the wires will be touching the stone. That way they're facing inward and they're not gonna touch you. That's sort of the kind of little rule I always follow for myself. That way you don't have to worry about filing and, you know, messing around too much. There we go. So I hope you liked watching this video. I sure enjoyed making it. It was awesomely fun. Super straightforward. It looks like, you know, you worked, f you know, really, really hard on this, but it's really just straightforward wire wrapping. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you for liking and subscribing. And uh, do check out my socials in the description below. Help me out on Patreon if you can, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!